Hi and welcome to Equity Education, the chemistry version. And today we're going to be looking at uh, reacting masses and limiting reagent calculations. Okay, so you should have a basic grasp on the formulas you'll need to go to use. If you're unsure, then you may want to have a look back at the video moles and basic calculations. Okay. Right, so we'll get started. I'd like you to open your booklet and uh, we shall get going. So, reacting masses. Uh, reacting masses is used to calculate the amount of a reactant or product given information on another substance involved in the equation or the reaction. It gives us the theoretical mass of a substance if there was a hundred percent efficiency. In the reaction, this never happens. There is always product loss due to error. So usually there's product loss because maybe you haven't got all of the reactants out of the reacting vessels, such as a conical flask or a beaker. Uh, and this means that you're never going to get 100% conversion between our reactants and products. Okay, but you're still asked to calculate them in the uh, exams in questions. Okay, so an example. We'll go through this as an example and then you can have a go at answering some of these questions. So. Calculate the mass of magnesium oxide that can be produced if 3.50 grams of magnesium is completely burnt in excess oxygen. Right, so first thing you need to do is write down the balanced equation, and I think you can have a go at this. So uh, write down the balanced equation. Okay, so I've got my equation, but is it balanced? No, it's not, so I need to balance it up. So I need 2mg and 2mgo, and this should balance now two atoms of magnesium this side and this side, two oxygens, two oxygen atoms over here. Okay, first thing you need to do is calculate the number of moles in the reaction. And you should know from the previous videos that to work out my number of moles, it must be N equals M over MR. Therefore, we have 3.5 grams of magnesium find the MR by looking on the period table, which gives me a value of 0.144 moles of Mg. Okay, so I know my number of moles of magnesium um, that have reacted in this reaction. Now I can use the molar ratio to calculate the number of moles of MgO produced. I know that the molar ratio is 2mg to 2mgo, so that's basically the same as 1 to 1. Therefore, my number of moles of magnesium is equal to my number of moles of magnesium oxide. So my number of moles of magnesium oxide must be 0.144 moles of MgO. Remember, this step is important because you may not have the same number of mole, uh, the same molar ratio between reactants or reactants and products. Okay, so now I can calculate the mass of magnesium oxide produced. So my mass of MgO is equal to N times MR, which point one four one four four. Uh, magnesium is 24.3 and oxygen is 16, if you add this up, equals 40.3, which gives me a value of 5.80 grams. Okay, it's so pretty simple. So we can work out the amount of products produced by looking at the amount of, or the mass of the reactants in the uh, chemical reaction that we've been given. Right, so moving on, I want you to have a go at doing this yourself. So calculate the mass in tons of aluminium oxide that could be produced from 51 tons of aluminium. Okay, I'll give you a clue about the equation. So it's aluminium being completely burnt in oxygen. Right, so I'll give you five minutes to have a go at this. Oh, and remember that one ton is equal to one times 10 to the six grams. Okay. Okay, so this is our equation. 
again, if you're unsure how to form ionic compounds, there's a video on that, so I'd also suggest going to watch that if you're unsure how, you make, how to make this aluminium oxide. Right, so the first thing we need to do is to calculate our number of moles of aluminium. So N equals M divided by ML, which is equal to, what's my mass? Okay, uh, mass is 51. Now I am going to convert it into grams because that's my unit for mass. So 51 times 1 to, uh, times 10 to the 6 because it's in tons. Divide by my MR of aluminium, which is 27, which gives me a value of 1.89 times 10 to the 6 moles. Now I need to use my molar ratio to work this out. And here we have a molar ratio of 2 to 1. So my number of moles of aluminium compared to my number of moles of A2O3, it's going to be half 2 to 1. Therefore, I need to divide my number of moles of aluminium by 2. So this would be 1.89 times 10 to the minus, oh, not to the minus 6, to the 6. Well, let's just write that again. So 10 to the 6 divided by 2 equals, what does it equal? It equals 9.44. 9.44 times 10 to the 5 moles of Al2 3 So I've worked out my number of moles produced in this reaction of aluminium oxide. I can now convert this into mass using this formula and times Mr. So 9.44 times 10 to the 5 times by my MR of aluminium oxide which is something 94 which gives me a value of 8.87 times 10 to the 7 and then if I so this is my grams of aluminium oxide if I wanted to convert this back into tons to make it slightly easier to read, I would divide by 1 times 10 to the 6, which gives me a value of 88.7 tons of Al2O3. Okay, so pretty simple so far. All right, so uh, next question. I again would like you to have a go at this. So calculate the mass of phosphorus required to make 200 grams of phosphine, pH3, by the reaction below. Okay, so have a go at this one. Okay, I'm sure you're all able to do this, so we'll go through it. So uh, calculate the mass of phosphorus required to make 200 grams of phosphine. So I know this time my mass of the product phosphine, and I need to work backwards to work out the mass of phosphorus I need uh, to gain the required mass. So the first thing I need to do is work out my number of moles of phosphine. You'll see me writing these equations quite a lot. 200 divided by my MR of phosphine. So I add up my uh, ARs, which is 34. So 200 divided by 34 equals 5.88 moles of pH3. Now I look at my molar ratio. So my molar ratio between P4 and pH3 is 1 to 1, 1, 1. Therefore, I would have the same amount of moles. I have 5.88 moles of P4. I know all I need to do is calculate my mass of P4 using the formula M equals N times MR. I know my number of moles. I need to find the MR of P4. Remember, that will be 31 times by 4 because we have 4 atoms involved in this phosphorus. 
which is 124, which gives me a value of 729.12 grams. If we're going to stick to three significant figures, 730 grams. Okay, I'm sure you all managed to do that, so we'll move on. Right, so slightly more difficult, but still okay. Uh, limiting reagents. So, a limiting reagent is the substance that has the least number of moles stated in a reaction given the substance's masses. E.g., and we'll do a we'll do a question uh, so I can show you what I mean. So 0 0.80, 0 0.80 grams of H2O and 5 grams of SiCl4 were placed in a reaction container. What mass of silicon dioxide will be produced from these amounts of reactants? Okay, so first thing we need to do is to calculate the moles of each reactant because we're giving we're given both of uh, the masses. So I'm going to use n equals m divided by mR. So n of H2O is equal to my mass 0 0.880 divided by my mR of H2O which is 18 which gives me a value of something. What does it give me a value of? To do it quickly 0 0.8 divided by 18 is 0 0.044 0 0.0444 now I need to calculate my mass of NiCl4 uh, SiCl4 excuse me equals 5 divided by my MR which we calculated to be 200 and what do we calculate it to be 170.1 so 5 divided by 170.1 equals 0 0.0294 moles of SiCl4 and H2O okay so I got two amounts okay now I need to look at the molar ratios between these so the molar ratio between SiCl4 and H2O is 1 to 2 Therefore, if I was to work out my number of moles of H2O, I needed to react with this amount of SiCl4. I'd use this molar ratio. So my molar ratio is 1 to 2. So H2O to SiCl4. So to work out my moles of H2O, I need to times by 2. Oh, excuse me. I need to times my number of moles of SiCl4 by 2 because it's 1 to 2. So this would be 0 0.0294 times by 2 gives me. What does it give me? Gives me. I'll do 294 times by 2 gives me 0 0.0588 okay so this here is our number of moles of H2O that is needed to react with this number of moles of SiCl4 therefore I know that the reactant with the fewest number of moles in the equation given our masses from the reaction at the start is this. So this is my limiting reagent. Because I don't have enough number of moles of H2O to react with my number of moles of SiCl4. Okay, so that means that we've just done that, decide which reactant is the limiting reagent. So it's the one with the fewest number of moles after we've done the molar ratio which is H2O, and use these reactants number of moles to calculate the amount of SiO2 produced. Right, so uh, I now need to look at my molar ratio again, so 2 moles of H2O go to SiO2, 
so H2O to SiO2 so my ratio is 2 to 1 therefore my number of moles of H2O is 0 0.0444 divided by 2 gives me 0 0.0222 moles of Si C not Cl4 that's what we've already been doing is Si02 I now need to calculate my mass of Si02 times by the MR of silicon dioxide which is 64.1 gives me a value of 1.42 grams 1.42 grams okay just check to make sure they're similar-ish amounts looks about right okay so uh, it's exactly the same calculation that we use to work out the reactive masses just with the added step at the beginning of calculating the number of moles of each reactant to work out which one is the limiting reagent. Okay, right, so question for you now. Lead oxide reacts with concentrated hydrochloric acid as follows. What mass of lead chloride would be obtained from 37.2 grams of uh, lead oxide and 25 grams of HCl? Okay, so have a go and see how you get on. Okay, so I need to work out my number of moles of the reactants used to figure out my reacting uh, my limiting reagent. So my number of moles of what we start with first, PbO2, is equal to 37.2 divided by the MR 239.2, which equals 0 0.156 moles. I need to work out my number of moles of HCl given the mass divide it by the MR number of moles of HCl which is 25 divided by 36.5 which gives me a value of 0 0.68 I think but I will check that because I can't read my handwriting 25 0 0.685 0 0.685 moles of HCl now I need to look at my molar ratios again to work out which one is the limiting reagent so my molar ratio is 4 to 1 of HCl and PbO2 therefore to work out my number of moles of HCl, I'm going to times this by 4, so it's 3 times 4, so 0.156 times by 4 equals 0 0.624, 0 0.624, okay, so this is the amount of HCl I need to react with this exact amount. So this number of moles is bigger of HCl. Therefore, my limiting reagent must be my lead oxide. It's my limiting reagent. It has the fewest number of moles to react given the molar ratios and molar quantities given in the reaction. So now I can work out my, uh, what are we trying to calculate? my mass of lead chloride which would be produced so my molar ratio between my lead oxide and lead chloride is 1 to 1 so 1 to 1 between lead oxide and lead chloride therefore I will have 0.156 moles of PCL PB even lead PBO2 and then I can work out my mass of lead chloride using any 
equals n times mr, so 0.156, times by my mr of lead chloride, which is 278.2, which gives me a value of 43.4 grams. Check to make sure that the gram, the masses look similar-ish. Yes, they do. There's no massive differences. All right, so that should be correct. Okay, so, and that's it. That's it. So, uh, short but sweet today. And uh, there were some reactions, some reactant masses uh, calculations and some limiting reagent calculations. They're pretty much the same, but the only thing you need to remember is that if you've got a limiting reagent question, you must make sure you work out the number of moles of each of the reactants and take the one with the fewest uh, number of moles once you have applied the molar ratios. Okay, as usual, I hope that was useful and I will see you again next time.